I recently started a community on Instagram where you guys could ask me questions. And one question that kept coming up was how to use curves in Lightroom. A lot of people see them there, but don't fully know how to use them. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you guys five creative ways that you guys can use curves in your car photography. But first, I'm gonna help you guys understand what they actually are and how you guys can use them. Then we're going to the five different ways that you can use them creatively. So the tone curve is an additional tool that we have in Lightroom to help us adjust our exposures and colors. There's a lot that you can do with it. I'm gonna show you guys how I use it and how you can understand it really quickly. So one thing that I make sure to always have up in my Lightroom is up in the top right here, you can see I have a histogram. What a histogram is, is essentially a map of your exposure and even some of your colors here. But for me, I mostly use it to make sure I'm not overexposing or underexposing something. So here we actually have a pretty balanced image because on the left, you can see here it says blacks, then shadows, exposure, highlights, and whites. So what's really interesting actually about this, and a lot of people don't know, is you can actually click on one of these things and drag them and it will adjust your tone exposure. You can see that little highlight thing move in there just by clicking on the graph up top there. So I don't necessarily recommend you edit this way, but if you're wildly overexposed or underexposed, you can just click and drag that. But for the most part, we're just gonna use the actual exposure tile here. Now, how do you use this when you are going to be using your tone curve? Well, we've done a really basic adjustment here in the tone section, presence, vibrance, and saturation. So we're just gonna go into our tone curve here. Now the tone curve you can see has a almost direct correlation in the shadows here as it does up in the histogram. So what this is doing is it's painting a picture for us of where our highlights are, shadows, and mid-tone details. The highlights are on the farthest right side of the tone curve and the shadows are on the farthest left or the bottom. And if you see, there's a few options here that we can pick. So here, it's gonna show us exactly where those buttons are. If we pressed a button or dragged something, exactly where it corresponds and correlates. I personally find this particular one to be a little bit limiting and confusing. So almost always, I select this one here, which gives me full control over the curves, rather than this one kind of just giving you some control. I don't really like it. So we're gonna click on this one here and that will give us full control over the tone curve. We can add points by clicking on the tone curve. So if we click on this top point here and drag it left, we're kind of adding exposure. And if we drag it down, we're reducing exposure. You can see what it's doing up in the histogram. Similarly with the bottom left, this is our blacks. So if we drag this to the right and you look at the photo, we're actually gonna be crushing blacks. We're gonna be bringing the blacks down. If you bring this up, you're gonna be telling the shadows to raise and the blacks to come up. So what we can do here though, is in different parts of the image, we can add or subtract the light based on where we add a point. So if I add one up in the farthest third here and I add light to it, so I push it up, we're gonna get more light where it corresponds to in the photo, which is in the highlights. Or if we bring that down, we're gonna be bringing just the highlights down. Now, if we do the same thing and add a point in the midtones, we're gonna be adding light to the midtones or bringing down light in the midtones. The fun thing is you can start adding these points throughout this curve and then they start to speak to each other or limit what the other actions can do maybe is the easiest way to say it. So if I wanna limit the shadows, I'm gonna put that there and now this curve won't move anything past that point or I can put one in the midtones, and now this highlight won't move anything past that point. If you don't know where one of these points or adding a point correlates to your specific photo, you can actually grab this little guy here and say we want more highlights to come off of this car. I can actually click that point, come over to the highlights of the car, click and drag up to add more highlights or bring it down by bringing it down. So you can see it adds that point on the tone curve for me. Similarly, we could come to the mid-tones here, click and bring those up or down. So as you're learning the tone curve, you can actually just use this little tool here 
and you actually don't need to know too much about how the curve works. But once you start seeing where these points start landing, you'll get a bit of a better idea of where you want to pull the details out. Now, if that section is a little bit confusing, stick with me to the end because I think I'll give you enough examples of how I use this tool that you'll feel a little bit more educated and able to implement these in your photos by the end of the video. Now, the next question you might have is what are these colors for? So you've got a red, a green, and a blue circle, and they all have correlating curves. Now, to be honest with you, I never use this section because what it is is essentially telling me that I can either add or subtract blue in the highlights, lowlights, or midtones using specific curves, or similarly in the greens and magentas, or similarly in the blues and yellows. Now, when it comes to color control, Lightroom gives you a ton of tools for color control not in the tone curve section. I personally use the color mixer or the color grading tools or just the temperature dials or the point color tool to adjust the colors. So I tend to not want to use any of these, but simply put, if you want to add reds, you're just gonna bring the reds up in whichever point you want. So if we wanted to add them specifically in the highlights area there, we can grab or make a point and push it up and you're gonna see warmth being added into the highlights area there. Similarly, if you wanna add blues to the shadows, you just bring the shadow section towards the blues and you'll see some of that coming there. The last thing I'll say before we get into the five examples is how I personally set up my photos for success using the S curves. I'll use the highlights uh, shadows, whites, and blacks to actually retain as much detail in the photo as possible. So as you can see up in my histogram, I don't have any highlights peaking or blown out. You can see up here, I tend to not put my whites too far over and make sure they're not hitting that wall there. So I'll actually bring the highlights down oftentimes, the whites down oftentimes, and in car photography specifically, we're bringing the shadows up to make sure that we're getting a lot of detail in those darker areas. And the last thing that I'll do is with my blacks, I'll bring them down, hold option, and I'll bring those down till there's no detail in the dark sections, but that's kind of how I set my basic contrast. From there, I feel like I have the ability to go to the tone curve and add style. So the first stylistic choice that you can use with the tone curve is adding what's called the S curve. The S curve is a style that's used a ton in cinema to bring the highlights up and the shadows down. And so the way you're gonna do that is by adding a point up on the higher section here, so in the front third and in the bottom third as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the top third up which is gonna add exposure to the highlights, and we're gonna bring that bottom section down, which is gonna add contrast. Now, if I click on this little eye here, you can see what that's doing. It's adding a ton of contrast, honestly too much in my opinion, but that is an S curve, and this is used in cinema all of the time. The second way you can use this tool is to add pop in your subject or in automotive photography specifically. This tool is gonna to help a ton. So whether you want to do an S curve, you can pull up in the highlights, or in this case, maybe we'll pull down in the highlights to save the data there. We're gonna add a point on the bottom left and we're maybe actually gonna save some of the shadows there as well. But this is what makes a really huge difference in automotive photography. Grab a point in the middle here and you're actually gonna drag this up. So what you're gonna see is this gonna really help the car stand out and really pop out of the image. You can then adjust your highlights based on what you're seeing in the image, but this really simple tool is a great way to add pop in your mid-tones, in car photography, or in any photography where you're trying to add pop to your subject, and they tend to land kind of in the mid-tone range there. So the second way that you can use the tone curve is actually inside of a mask. This is a new update that Lightroom gave us this last year, and it is absolutely massive in how we can adjust the exposure on our subject specifically, or literally within any of the mask tools that we're given. So initially with this photo here, I actually wanna bring down some of the highlights and add a bit nicer contrast to the image. So I'm gonna add a point up top here, just to bring down the highlights. You can see it's adjusting the whole photo because I haven't set any limitations to what it's doing to the bottom. So it's actually dragging that whole curve down. So what I wanna do is bring back the detail in the midtone. so I'm bringing that back up. And then on the bottom left, I'm going to bring back the contrast. So there we go, there's a bit better of contrast there 
And you can see this S-curve is pretty wonky, but that's okay. Now, one tool that we always use in automotive photography is the graduated filter. I'm just gonna go ahead and add one of those here just to make this image look nicer for the meantime. Now, typically when you add a graduated filter here, we're just gonna grab the exposure dial here and bring that down. Works perfectly fine. Now, go up and create a new mask and hit select subject. AI is then gonna select our subject here does a pretty good job, not perfect. So we're gonna add with a bit of a brush here, just to brush in the details of this car here. Now from here, we're gonna actually bring our subject out of the frame. So to do this, I'm gonna go down to the tone curve inside of a mask. So you can see we're in the masked section here and we've got our mask selected with the subject. So now I'm gonna add a point up at the top here and we're gonna drag that up. So it's gonna bring the highlights up on the car specifically. We're also gonna go to the mid-tones and we're gonna pop that as well. And you can see how much this makes the car pop. So you kind of need to be careful with this, not to make the car pop too much or unnaturally. It's important for the car to still look like it sits naturally in the photo here. So we're gonna pop that up a little bit and then this is where we bring that natural look back is in the contrast. So with a point on the bottom and we're gonna make it look like it sits in that photo again. So a great way to see how much you've done here is to come up to the mask and then just hit that eye tool and you can see what that mask is doing. Another thing you can do is come over to the amount slider here and you can bring that up or down just to add that exposure bump to taste. So that's a great way to use a curves tool inside of masks to help your subject pop. Now, of course, this works great with automotive, but it works great with any subject like humans or cats or whatever you like to photograph. The next tool we're gonna to talk about is how you can actually get the faded look. Now, what this means is that we're taking the shadows and we're either bringing them up so that you can't get crushed or hard blacks. They're kind of soft blacks. And similarly, in the highlights, you can get soft roll off. So you can see in this photo here, I've already got my S curve. So this is a popping photo. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go down to this bottom point here. So this is the farthest black point. And I'm actually gonna take this point and drag it up to the left. Now I'm gonna go extreme here, but what you can see is now we have really soft shadows or that faded look. And this is how you get that look in Lightroom is you grab those shadows and drag them up. Now, not only can you drag them up, you can actually drag them out. So like away from the wall, and then you're gonna get crushed shadows, but only to a certain degree. So you can play around with this to get crushed shadows and get that faded look to a point that you personally like. I kind of like this sometimes if I want that softer look. Similarly with the highlights, we can do this and we can drag this down. Now, if you look up in the histogram in this section, you can see that we're actually not allowing any data to move past the highest point that we drag this point. So up here, you can see nothing goes past the same kind of point as this little curve here. So this is how you can control where your highlights are or crushed or not. Um, but this gives you kind of that softer feel. Now the last great way that I suggest you guys can use the curves tool is by actually selecting the background and helping to bring your car or subject out of the image. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go up and we're gonna create a new mask. We're gonna select the background. Hopefully it does a decent job of pulling our car out. It does. And then what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna come to our curves tool and really simply, you can just grab a point in the middle and you can start dragging down. Now what this is doing is just bringing attention to our car. Our eyes are drawn to light, so we want our car or our subject to be the brightest part of the image that our eyes are drawn to immediately. Especially in a digital age when everyone's on Instagram, you want to make it as easy as possible for people to be drawn to your subject. So this is another great way to just select the background bring down the exposure, and then you can still fiddle with this to make the, the background have an S-curve itself. Whatever you wanna do, just play with this in order to make that look natural. You could even add that faded look just in the background. You can bring down the highlights just in the background. Now that we have masks in Lightroom and the ability to adjust curves inside those masks, it's super powerful. Now, hopefully you feel more educated on how to use the curves tool, but if you're still confused or you just want a quicker way of getting the curves adjusted, I've actually created a Lightroom Toolkit preset for you where you can actually come in and you can select which curve style you want. 
I think there's 12 different curve options you guys can use here that are pre-baked. So you can use that softened look here. I've already got it built or you can just do simple pops that I've already got built and you can stack these on top of any preset you already have. And on top of curves, we've got different colors like creamy colors, you've got cool your jets, you've got nighttime options. There's a whole bunch of different color tones that you can get in this preset pack that I've built for you. So obviously, I hope you guys are educated, but if you want to either support the channel or have a faster way of adding all these colors, curves, light options, sharpening, and even filters, I've got them pre-built into this pack for you. You can go download these presets on my website or click the links down below to get to Shopify, but make sure to use the code CURVES30 to get 30% off your order. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate your time. I hope you learned something. And if you guys did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. You might want to subscribe to the channel here. You might like that video there. And otherwise, I really do hope I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.